The word Wednesday means the day of the week before Thursday and after Tuesday. In the NFL, the word Wednesday generally means the day we hear from players about things we want to know about. Today, former Patriot, Jimmy Garoppolo. Since taking over as the 49ers quarterback, he's 4-0. He's averaging more than 300 yards per game. And it's had a lot of people wondering if New England made a mistake dealing him. Here's Tom Brady yesterday on his former backup. Well, he's done a great job. I mean, you go in there and, you know, get the opportunity to play and win games. That's what we're all here for. So it was good to see and, uh, you know, good for them to beat Jacksonville. That certainly helped us. Mm. I'm really happy for Jimmy. And he's worked really hard. And uh, it's it shows up when he goes out there and plays really well. All right, CC, we know what the 49ers got for Garoppolo. They got a second-round pick. Mm -hmm. What do you think, if we did it all over again, what he would be worth right now? Oh, two number ones. Two number ones. And they might have to throw in a player or something. I mean, when a box you, of chocolate. you win three, four games with the type of talent. I mean, Jenna, they are $100 million under the salary cap for next year. Like, you can't name five starters on their offense. Like, you would be hard-pressed. Like, what he has done in learning a whole new system, which is probably... Kyle Shanahan, the most complicated system as far as calling plays, understanding everything, and, and, and the way he's done it. Jimmy Garoppolo has made the hot dogs in San Francisco better. <laughs> the, the equipment dude is better. Their kicking game is better. Like, this game is, is so dependent on one position. I mean, it's amazing. It, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's literally made their defense better. Yes. The defense is playing more inspired. The, the entire team, you mentioned the complicated system. Matt Ryan, who some people would say is a top six quarterback, I, everyone has him as a top 12 quarterback, mm -hmm. took a full year to, to get it. Yes. Yeah. Jimmy G took him like three weeks. I, they were one in ten. They, they are now the league's only undefeated team over the last month. Think about that. When, when the Pats traded Jimmy G to the Niners for a second round pick, the commentary is this. Well, they only got a second round pick, but it'll be the first or second pick of the second round. No, it won't. This team won't win six games. Like they, yeah. they all of it, they went from one and ten to four and to four and eleven. I the or five and ten, yeah. pardon me. So I, instead of getting two of the top thirty-five players, mm -hmm. now they're gonna get one player in the fortieth. Right. Did the Patriots not know this? May, I, they saw him every day. Nick, what happened? Well, I think that the Pats, it, there's a few things that happened. He has the same agent as Brady, and he didn't want to go to the Browns. Yep. And so they weren't going to do that, deal with that, what it could do with Brady and the they politics of that. All right, just like Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen don't want to go to Cleveland. He hadn't said their name. Now, Garoppolo, because of his agent and because he did have some cachet of being in the league, he said their name in private. Now, the quarterbacks, there's, there's such an image-conscious position that, it wouldn't have looked good for Jimmy G to say, "Yeah, I don't want to go to Cleveland." Like even because no, people would say, like, "Man, you're taking over a franchise. You should you should embrace that." No, he did the right thing. No, I want to go somewhere else. I want to go where the general manager got a five year contract guarantee. I want to go somewhere head coach got five years guarantee. I'm going to trust my future more in John Lynch than I am with someone in Cleveland, which I know it's going to be someone different. So. I think behind the scenes, they did the right thing. New England, they had to get rid of Jimmy G. They had to because he was going to be a free agent. Well, so here's the thing. The, it, some people are going to look at this and say New England must not have known he was that good. Or they knew he was amazing. And that's why his, they could have gotten more for him if they traded him this offseason. It wasn't just Cleveland that would have offered him something. They could have gotten more trading him this offseason. But if the Patriots were concerned, as I was, how good's Brady going to be this year? Because if Brady were bad this year, if Brady had been bad the first seven games of the year, or even mediocre, Different they wouldn't have traded him. Right. They, Brady would be the one moving on in the offseason. But then they get through six, seven weeks. Brady's the damn league MVP. Yes. They know Jimmy G. The only option is to franchise tag him. If you franchise tag Jimmy G., that really damages what you can do to win next year's Super Bowl. But if they knew it was this good, would you do it? I. If you knew he you was, got to. Right. Okay, if you so they didn't know he was They didn't know good. he was quite this good. I think they knew no, he was really no, good. No one knows that. I think they had plenty of confidence. But look at New England. New England's got three starting quarterbacks in the NFL. They got Tom Brady. 
They traded Jacoby Brissett to Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and now they got Jimmy G in San Francisco. I think New England, just like the other positions, they got that position figured out how to coach up the talent so that the kids can be successful, where well, they're men now, but how they can be successful in any system because that's what we're seeing. Well, and the other thing New England did, which is interesting here, if you look at the NFC, okay, the NFC, we're about to have a changing of the guard at the quarterback position conference to conference. Yes. For 15 years, the AFC was the dominant conference quarterback was. Peyton Manning's there, Tom Brady's there, uh, Philip Rivers is there, Big Ben Roethlisberger's there. The only, like, stable quarterbacks in the NFC during that time, Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers. Other teams have had turnover. Yes. Right now, that's about to change. And in the NFC, you look at it. What teams would have been in the market for a quarterback. It really amazingly was just the Cardinals and the Niners. Seahawks, Rams got their guys. Every team in the NFC South thinks they have mm -hmm. their guy. The, the Bears just drafted a guy. So if you're the Pats and you do think Jimmy's not this good, but really good. Send him to the other conference. Don't have to deal with it. You know what I mean? So let, uh, guess what, Jimmy? We'll play you once every four years, and if you make a Super Bowl, and we happen to as well. And there weren't a lot of teams. Now, the team that's got to be killing themselves is Arizona. Arizona's got to be thinking, you got to be kidding me. Mm. Like, we could have gotten this guy, and we didn't get this guy. I, they, you asked what it was worth. Would the Niners right now trade him to Cleveland for the first overall pick? No. Absolutely not. Heck no. Right. <laughs> Wait, last question quickly before we go to break. You said they could have gotten so much more for him at the end of the season if he was a free agent. Why, why didn't they just do that? No, no, no. He, they would have had this. At the end of this last season, they could have gotten more. This season. Last season. Last season, they, season they, last season they could have. This season, he's a free agent. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. couldn't get anything. He can okay. go wherever he wants. And I believe they rejected better offers earlier. Earlier. All right. Coming up, is Pete Carroll upset with one of his best players? That's next on First Things First. Showing off his 40-inch vertical. I cannot believe this guy didn't play pro volleyball. Oh, come on. Well, they pay a little more in the NBA. Now, you talking about an unsung rookie? The 13th pick, right, Nick? Yeah, man. Man, you rookie of the year, where is he at right now, Nick? Third, second? Fourth, I think. I think fourth? Fourth okay. right now. Simmons, Tatum, Kuzma, Mitchell. Hey, nice. Manny yeah. Ginobili turning back the clock. This guy's 40. <laughs> 40. Watch it again. We went from 40-inch vertical, vertical to 40-year-old man with a 40-inch bald spot. That's his second dunk of the year. 40-year-old. Let's go full Nick. Get it all. Just Whoa. Like, no, you know. he needs Jay, man. Jay will spray some stuff like mine and people won't know. <laughs> a little paint, the world won't know what you something, ain't. Something. All right, watch this. Something we never see. Phoenix Sun Center, what? Tyson Chandler Six dunks the, the inbound lob. Yeah, point .6. Oh, sorry. That's okay. It was the game winner. The final, final, final tick. Watch it. Hey. Memphis, I know you fired your coach, J.B. Bickerstaff. You're my guy. I know you from your time in Houston is the interim coach. You can't let this happen How with .6 on the clock. How hard is that toss? Also, you got a seven-footer, Gasol, um, guarding the ball. You can't let him throw it to the rim. No, no, you can't. <laughs> Come on. Andre Drummond showing that seven-footer. Oh, oh, hey. Look at that, Andre Drummond. Surprise himself. Go get it. Steph Curry had the night off. He decided to wear an Andre Drummond costume. Look at that. I think Steph helped him with his free throws this offseason. Somebody did. All right, guys, follow me here. As we move on to America's team, the Cowboys season is over, but not. But is. Yes, they've got another game left. But also, yes, they're done for the year and already looking ahead to next season. After falling to 8-7 and seven with the loss to the Seahawks, many have been questioning the future of Jason Garrett. But Jerry Jones seems to be committed to his head coach. Listen to this. I certainly know a lot about Jason Garrett. But because of that, I can very quickly and candidly say his job is not at issue here at all. It's not the best interest of the Cowboys right now to be considering a head coaching change. I mean, Jerry Jones, seemingly the, the word of God here, but would bringing Jason Garrett back be the right move, CC? Uh, anytime I talk about coaches' hirings and firings, I, I, I try to look beyond me getting rid of them and I try to replace them and try to wonder, did I really upgrade the position? I don't believe in just changing coaches just to change because, you know, they could do a lot worse. And based on what we're hearing from the coaching vacancies, there's going to be an, an unusual number of vacancies this year for head coaches. Like, and when you look at the pool of coaches, I mean, there's really not a sexy name or someone that jumps out there, not unless – and I don't think he would do it, John Gruden. Now, if you told me that John Gruden was going to go to Dallas, then I'd be like, okay.
then I think that that might be an upgrade over Jason Garrett. Tell me why. Why John Gruden over Jason Garrett? What does he have? The reason why, because I believe that he's going to develop a young quarterback. Also, he has the type of energy that is really, I mean, it affects a locker room. Infectious I, I, energy. I, yes, I believe that he is a... Not a good leader. I believe he is a great leader. I know he loves the game of football. I just don't know with Dallas and Jerry, sometimes there's so many other things. And Gruden is about football. You know, and, and I would say that he is the most talented of all the coaches if they made themselves available. I don't think he's going to be, be available. I think Jason Garrett has done a good job with Jerry. Because the last few years, Jerry and them got it right as far as drafting the players. The players he gave him to develop, he's developed these players. They still need a few more players. We thought because they found um, that, that, oh, now they're going to the Super Bowl. Well, they still need a few players. I believe Rod Marinelli has done a great job with the defense. And I believe that Scott Manahan, they should look at a new op option as far as the offensive coordinator. That would be my mandate to Jason Garrett. I want to keep him as the head coach. But I need a different offense. I need something a little sexier. I need you to be able to draw up some plays to get my wide receivers open. Because I know my interior line and the running back and the quarterback, we're going to be good. But I do need the quarterback to grow. Now, do I trust that to Scott Lanahan and Jason Garrett? I trust Jason Garrett enough to continue that process. I would hire a new offensive coordinator and try to reboot that offense. Here is here's the critical point that CC brings up about you. You can't just look at it as do we want to keep Jason Garrett or get rid of Jason Garrett? It has to. If, if you're going to go with option B, you then have to discuss and you have to figure out and be right about who is replacing him. I got a list in front of me right here. 22 teams in this league have changed coaches since 2012. Those 22 teams have accounted for 77 people being head coach of their football teams in those last five years. 77 guys for these 22 teams. So think about how many teams. Think about what the Chicago Bears did. They decided, you know what, we're sick of being good but not great with Lovey Smith. Mm -hmm. We're going to hire Mark Tressman. That didn't work out, so they fired him. They hired John Fox. He's about four days from being fired. Think about what the Tampa Bay Bucks did. Also, yes. amazingly, to Lovey Smith. <laughs> we, we, we don't, we, we're going to move on from Lovey. We're going to bring in Dirk Cutter. He's about four days from being fired. The San Francisco 49ers. Jim Harbaugh can't get along with our management. Yep. We're going to hire Jim Tom Sula. No, no, no. We're going to fire him, bring in. Chip Kelly. No, 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 we're going to fire him. Took them three coaches to get it right with Kyle Shanahan. The New York Giants fired Tom Coughlin. Not good enough. Bring in Ben McAdoo. He's already fired. Because everyone's hoping for the Sean McVay, right? Everyone's hoping for the one unknown, the one guy, the diamond in the rough exactly. that you never thought that was going to work out. But of those 77 people, there's like one Sean McVay. Well, there, right. There's, you go down the list and you're like, who, who, which of these teams? I mean, we can talk about the Raiders. The Raiders, who since jo John Gruden was their coach. Yes. No one had, they've had nine head coaches since then. Wow. Nine head coaches since John Gruden was their coach back in 2001. So... What you don't want to do if you're Dallas is get on this coaching treadmill. What you don't want to yes. do, what you know about Jason Garrett is this. You're not going to have a bad season. You might have a mediocre season. Mm -hmm. Jason Garrett, since he's been there, he's been at 500 or above every year, except for the year they were disastrous at quarterback because Romo got hurt. They were 4-12 and 12 once. Every other year, they have three 8-8 eight eight years, two 12-win 12, oh, 12 year, 13-win year, and then this year, where they'll be 8-8 eight eight or 9-7. and seven. Like, I just don't I think sometimes great is the enemy of good. I know people say it the opposite. Good is the enemy of great. Sometimes in your quest to be great, you end up with Dirk Cutter, or you end up with John Fox Part 3, or you end up with Jim Tom Sula, and then you're just doing this all over again in but 24 months. But this wasn't, CeCe, this wasn't a Cowboys team that went haywire just because of the head coach. They had other issues. They, they lost their running back for six weeks. They mm -hmm. had a bunch of controversy in right. the beginning of the season. So you can't just look at this season and just take their record separate from everything else and say, oh, that's Jason. You can't just pin that all on Jason Garrett. That's what you're saying. Yeah, true. But it's um, when, you, when you are coaching the Dallas Cowboys, you're going to be under a tremendous amount of scrutiny. Some of it justified, some of it unjustified. But Jason, to me, has proved he's more than a competent 
NFL leader. I just don't believe there's a lot of people that are born to lead an NFL locker room. You're talking about a very odd mix of 53 men coming from all different parts of the world, different understandings, and trying to get them on the same page, and with everything surrounding Dallas. There's always controversy in Dallas. There's always news as far as their players. Zeke, this is not new to Dallas, so you have to have a coach who can manage that. I'm going to give you guys a couple names who I believe they might not be available, but they are well-suited. The number one candidate, I believe, even outside of John Gruden, is David Shaw of Stanford. Now, his biggest problem, his dad is Willie Shaw, great NFL coach long-term. I grew up with David, Minnesota. Willie was there. His wife and him feel like they have the best job in the nation in coaching at Stanford. And so their question is, is this job or is this place a better place, a better life? So I believe he'll stay at Stanford. And until he wins, Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. Now, what if he took over the Dallas Cowboys? Now, that would be something that I would look at. And that's another guy that's great with quarterbacks. At least, I, you know, that's my, my, I know at Michigan he hasn't had the quarterbacks, but we saw Kaepernick with him without him. I, I want to I defend Jason Garrett on one thing. Because Jason Garrett's not the best clock management guy in the league, but he's not the worst. Jason Garrett's not the best offensive guru in the league, but he's not the worst. There's, there's a lot of guys who are just awful at these things. The knock on Jason Garrett is, oh, he has the job because he's going to listen to Jerry. Here's a news flash for just people in America. Right. Everyone listens to their boss. Yes. This idea that there yes. are all these head coaches that would go rogue against the owner. Ron right. Rivera, tremendous job security. They just got a great win this week. You know how he broke down the team? One, two, three, Mr. Richardson. Why is Mr. Richardson in the news? Oh, he's selling the team because of a racist, misogynist scandal. The, Bill O'Brien, you think he wouldn't have liked to sign Colin Kaepernick? Guess why he didn't? Because his owner didn't want him to. All these guys listen to their bosses. It is no different than us. We do the same thing, listening to our bosses. So Everyone many. does. Yep. In, in every walk of life, you listen to the person signing your paycheck. All right, coming up, Jimmy G was traded for a second-round pick, but what would he be worth now? All Next the on picks? First Things First, all the picks. I'll take the draft. Everyone listen.